Fact number 29. Joseph Smith practices polygamy and marries between 33 and 40 wives. Joseph practices polandry and marries 11 plus women already married to living husbands. Ages of the women range from 14 up to 56. As much as Joseph welcomed a time of goodwill and peace in Nauvoo, however, he knew the Lord expected him to obey all his commandments, even if doing so tried the faith of the saints. And no commandment would be a greater trial than plural marriage. Joseph understood through revelation that marriage and family were central to God's plan. The Lord had sent Elijah the prophet to the Kirtland Temple to restore priesthood keys that sealed generations together like links in a chain. The years following Joseph's departure from Kirtland had been turbulent, and he had not introduced the saints to plural marriage then. But the situation was different in Nauvoo, where the saints had finally found a measure of safety and stability. Joseph also had confidence in the United States Constitution, which protected the free exercise of religion. Earlier that year, the Nauvoo City Council had affirmed this right when it passed an ordinance declaring that all religious groups were permitted to worship freely in Nauvoo. Although politicians had disappointed him in the nation's capital, Joseph believed in and trusted the founding principles of the American Republic to protect his right to live according to God's will. Still, he knew the practice of plural marriage would shock people, and he remained reluctant to teach it openly. While other religious and utopian communities often embraced different forms of marriage, the saints had always preached monogamy. Most saints, like most Americans, associated polygamy with societies they considered less civilized than their own. Although the details on Joseph Smith's polygamy is scattered and incomplete, we find a footnote referencing a book by LDS historian Todd Compton who wrote In Sacred Loneliness, The Plural Wives of Joseph Smith. The book is held as the most comprehensive research ever written about Joseph Smith's polygamy. We will reference it as we dive into this very sensitive subject to gain a better understanding of Joseph Smith's polygamy. As we trace the trajectory of Smith's marriages, we see that he apparently experimented with plural marriage in the 1830s in Ohio and Missouri. Detailed records are not extent, but the evidence, when weighed carefully, suggests that these were probably authentic plural marriages. But in 1842, he married 11 wives in the first eight months of the year. New marriages then stopped for five months, a significant gap perhaps caused by the John Bennett expose in which Smith's former right-hand man published a series of lurid articles chronicling Joseph's alleged misdeeds, including polygamy. However, during the first half of 1843, Joseph married 14 more wives, including five in May. After July, his marriages stopped abruptly with only two exceptions in September and November he took no wives during the last eight months of his life. A striking fact, especially when contrasted with the number of women he married during the previous two years. Why did he stop? This puzzle has a number of possible solutions. Nauvoo State President William Mark suggested in 1853 that Smith came to have doubts about polygamy before his death. When the doctrine of polygamy was introduced into the church as a principle of exaltation, I took a decided stand against it, which stand rendered me quite unpopular with many of the leading ones of the church. Joseph, however, became convinced before his death that he had done wrong. For about three weeks before his death, I met him one morning in the street, and he said to me, Brother Marks, we are a ruined people. I asked how so. He said, This doctrine of polygamy, or spiritual life system that has been taught and practiced among us, will prove our destruction and overthrow. I have been deceived, said he, in reference to its practice. It is wrong. It is a curse to mankind, and we shall have to leave the United States soon unless it can be put down and its practice stopped in the church. Smith then reportedly told Marx, to excommunicate all polygamists. Whether Smith came to believe polygamy was wrong 
or was merely pausing for tactical reasons, as he had during the Bennett scandal, is uncertain. But the eight-month secession of marriages at the end of his life is a notable phenomenon. The 25 or so wives whom Joseph married in early 1842 and 1843 bear impressive testimony to the fact that plural marriage was not simply a footnote to his life or theology, particularly since he was well aware of the threat of exposure. When he taught the principle of plural marriage to Sarah Kimball, wife of Hiram Kimball, he said that in teaching this, he realized that he jeopardized his life. Furthermore, some of his marriages were polyandrous, which incurred the danger of jealous husbands. So why so many women? Though 33 is less than 48, it is still a remarkably large polygamous family. One may wonder why Smith married so many women when two or three wives would have complied with the reported divine command to enter polygamy. However, the church president apparently believed that complete salvation depended on the extent of a man's family sealed to him in this life. Benjamin Johnson, a brother of Smith's plural wife, Almira, wrote, The first command was to multiply, and the prophet taught us that dominion and power in the great future would be commensurate with the number of wives, children, and friends that we inherit here and that our great mission to earth was to organize a nucleus of heaven to take with us. Joseph's marriages undoubtedly had a sexual dimension. In Smith's Nauvoo ideology, a fullness of salvation depended on the quality of family members sealed to a person in this life. This puts the number of women Joseph married into an understandable context. This doctrine also makes it clear that through Joseph's marriages undoubtedly had a sexual dimension. Theological concepts also drove his polygamy, as well as the related purpose of gaining the highest possible exaltation by linking elite families to him for both earthly and eternal reasons. So what were the ages of Joseph Smith's wives? The ages of Joseph Smith's wives in a group of Smith's well-documented wives, 11 of them, or 33%, were 14 to 20 years old when they married him. Nine wives, or 27%, were 21 to 30 years old. And eight wives, or 24%, were in Smith's own peer group, ages 31 to 40. In the group aged 41 to 50, there is a substantial drop-off, two wives, or at 6%, and three, or 9%, in the group 51 to 60. The teenage representation is the largest, though the 20-year and 30-year groups are comparable, which contradicts the Mormon folk wisdom that sees the beginnings of polygamy as an attempt to care for the older, unattached women. The data suggests that sexual attraction was an important part of the motivation for Smith's polygamy. In fact, the command to multiply and replenish the earth was part of the polygamy theology, so non-sexual marriage was generally not in the polygamous program as Smith taught it. Interestingly, Joseph's youngest wife, Helen Mar Kimball, was the daughter of another loyal apostle, Eber C. Kimball. So that marriage may also be considered dynastic, not motivated solely by sexual interest. Second, older women served as teachers and messengers to introduce and convert younger women to the practice in Nauvoo. Elizabeth Duffy and Patty Sessions belong in this category. Eliza R. Snow acted in this capacity in Utah for Mormon feminists unsympathetic to patriarchal polygamy this will be one of the most troubling aspects of, of Mormon polygamy. Women co-opting other younger females into the order. Joseph Smith's first wife, Emma, allegedly told the wife of Apostle George A. Smith, Lucy, that Joseph Smith's plural wives were celestial only, that he had no earthly marital relations with them. They were only sealed for eternity. They were not to live with him and have children. Lucy later wrote that when she told this to her husband, he related to me the circumstances of his calling on Joseph late one evening, and he was just taking a wash, and Joseph told him that one of his wives had just been confined, and Emma was the midwife, 
and he had been assisting her. He, George A. Smith, told me, Lucy Smith, this to prove to me that the women were married for time as well as for eternity, as Emma has told me that Joseph never taught any such thing. Because the RLDS Church claims that Joseph Smith was not married polygamously in the full, i.e. sexual sense, in the term, Utah Mormons, including Smith's wives, affirmed repeatedly that he had physical sexual relations with them despite the Victorian conventions in 19th century American culture, which ordinarily would have prevented any mention of sexuality. For instance, Mary Elizabeth Rollins Leiter stated that she knew of children born to Smith's plural wives. Quote, I know he had six wives, and I have known some of them from childhood up. I know he had three children, they told me. I think two are living today, but they are not known as his children as they go by other names. Melissa Lott Wiles testified that she had been Smith's wife in very deed. Emily Partridge Young said she roomed with Joseph the night following her marriage to him and said that she had carnal intercourse with him. Other early witnesses also affirm this. Benjamin Johnson wrote, On the 15th of May, the prophet again came and at my house occupied the same room and bed with my sister that the month previous he had occupied with the daughter of the later Bishop Partridge as his wife. According to Joseph Bates Noble, Smith told him he had spent a night with Louisa Beeman when Angus Cannon, a Salt Lake City State President, visited Joseph Smith III in 1905. The RLDS president asked rhetorically if these women were his father's wives. Then, quote, how was it that there was no issue from them? Cannon replied, all I knew was that which Lucy Walker herself contends. They were so nervous and lived in such constant fear that they could not conceive. He made light of my reply. He said, I am informed that Eliza Snow was a virgin at the time of her death. I in turn said, Brother Heber C. Kimball, I am informed. Asked her the question if she was not a virgin, although married to Joseph Smith, and afterwards to Brigham Young. When she replied in a private gathering, I thought you knew Joseph Smith better than that. Cannon then mentioned that Sylvia Sessions Lyon, a plural wife of Joseph Smith, had had a child by him, Josephine Lyon Fisher. Josephine left an affidavit stating that her mother, Sylvia, when on her deathbed, told her that she, Josephine, was the daughter of Joseph Smith. In addition, posterity, i.e. sexually, was an important theological element in Smith's Abrahamic promise justification for polygamy. Since there is a great deal of evidence that Joseph Smith had sexual relations with his wives, one wonders why he did not have more polygamous children. However, some of his children apparently grew up under other names, as Mary Leitner suggested. Furthermore, he may not have had numerous posterity because he was not able to visit his wives regularly both because he was often hiding from the law and because Emma, his first wife, watched him carefully. In addition, polygamy was illegal. On top of these pressures, he soon had many wives, which made it more difficult to visit all of them frequently and regularly. Since polygamists generally had favorite wives, Smith probably neglected some of his. Finally, some of his wives were married to other men in polandrous relationships. So such wives would probably have had children by their first husbands, with whom they were cohabitating regularly, not by Joseph. All these factors would have combined to limit the number of his children. However, it is clear that some of his plural wives did have children by him. If we can rely on the statements of George A. Smith, Josephine Fisher, and Elizabeth Leitner, at least 11 women were married to Joseph polyandrously including the wife of prominent apostle Orson Hyde. It shows that in many cases, Joseph was not simply asking for wives as a test of loyalty. Sometimes the test included giving up the wife. Another doctrine that apparently served as an underpinning for Smith's polyandry was his doctrine of a pre-existence, which holds that our spirits live with God before birth and were given assignments there relating to what we were due here. According to Mary Elizabeth Leitner, who was married to Adam Leitner when Joseph proposed to her, 
Joseph said I was his before I came here. He said all the devils in hell should never get me from him. Elsewhere, she wrote that Smith told her he had been commanded to marry her or suffer condemnation, for I, Mary, was created for him before the foundation of the earth was laid. Apparently, if Smith had a spiritual intuition that he was linked to a woman, he asserted that she had been sealed to him in the pre-existence, even though she was legally married to another man. But as we have seen, he taught that civil marriages performed without the priesthood sealing power were not valid, even at times sinful. Therefore, the link in the pre-existence would take immediate priority over a marriage performed by an invalid, secular, or sectarian authority in this life. John D. Lee wrote that a spiritual affinity took precedence over secular ceremonies. Thus, heavenly marriage in the pre-existence required earthly palandry here. Certain spirits were kindred, matched in heaven, were born into this life, and because of the unauthorized marriages performed without priesthood sealing power, became linked illegally to the wrong partners. But when the kindred spirits recognized each other, the illegal marriages became of no effect from a religious, eternal perspective, and the kindred partners were free to marry each other through the priesthood sealing power for eternity as well as for time. Apparently, however, Joseph would allow the wife to continue living with her first husband after such a marriage. There were no divorces as a result of his polandrous marriages, but the first husband probably recognized that he and the wife were married only until death, while Smith was married to her for eternity as well as for time.